in computer interfacing we have the plc lab and we are going to be making different gates using ladder logic in multi-sim the background for this is that a programmable logic controller which is a plc or programmable controller is an industrial digital computer which has been ruggedized and adapted for the control of manufacturing process such as assembly lines or robotic devices or any activity that requires high reliability which hence the ruggedness of the actual plc reliability control and ease of programming and process fault diagnostics they were first developed in the automotive industry and they are to provide flexible rugged and easy programming uh, controllers to replace hardwired relays and timers since they have been widely adopted as high reliable automation controllers suitable for harsh environments a plc is an example of a hard real-time system since output results must be produced in the system or in response to input conditions so we have output results and they're produced in response to some kind of input that we give it within a limited time otherwise an unintended operation will result and these underlying parts are clickable and they can be found in the document the google doc that's linked in the description so now we're going to look at the procedure so for this lab we are going to use multi-sim to simulate ladder logic we are going to review the actual rubric for this we are then going to complete sections 4.1 through 4.3 there's more sections however we're not going to be doing them here and after this we are going to or while we do this inside of these steps here we are going to create the logic gates and or nand and nor we are also going to think of an industrial application that this could be used in and we have some references right here which are also clickable the first reference is a wikipedia and it'll take us to these gates right here where we have the ands and a not and an or and then we have different scenarios which are industrial that we would use them in but we can look over that later the next link is just a page that'll tell us about the NAND and NOR gates that we need to make. First, we just have a brief overview of our ladder logic, and it's going to be explained more when we actually write this in here. Um, we're gonna create our ladder diagram here as well. And this just tells us about what everything is. So these are circuit notes. The relays X1 through X4 are normally open relays. When they're, and this is referencing this right here, this right here, this right here, this right here, it's a little bit small, so that's what it's referencing to. When they're controlling coils, which are M1 or M2, are energized, they're going to close. The controlling coils are set in the value tab of each relay's properties dialog box, which is like a right click, then we can edit that there. And then for details, we can look at these pages here. Both are X1 and our x2 must be closed for the lamp to turn on this is the and rung x5 to light for our ladder gate now for the next one the or gate the or rung either x3 or x4 either one of them must be closed for the lamp in the or rung to light up this is our x6 coil m1 controls the relay with m1 as the interface so that's X1 and X3. Both these are M1. And that's the same thing for M2. Now we would use keys 1 and 2 on our keyboard to open and close the switches. That's um, in response to where it says keys equal to 1 and keys equal to 2 for J1 and J2. Or we can just hover over and click them. And that's what we're going to do for these switches here. We can click and unclick and they're going to open like so. And if it doesn't come up when it searches, you can go down here and we see that we have all of our ladder things. So we can get rid of our component here and we have these different relays. We're not going to be using these, but this is also for ladders. We have ladder IO modules, which are input modules. We have our coils. We have our uh, relay coils, which are here. We have our ladder rungs, which we're gonna need. We need our left one and then our L2. So not left one, but L1 and L2. And that's for the left and right. And then the timer is here. So we could just click okay and we would paste this in here. We would come back and click OK, and we're gonna to want to paste this in here as well. So we can see that we have a AND gate already here, and we also have an OR gate. Now, if we run this, what's gonna happen is both lamps are turned off. Now, for the first one, 
if both of these are on, then our lamp is on. If one is off, or if both are off, our lamp is not on. And that's because this is a AND gate. When we need both inputs to be high for there to be a high output. Now for our OR gate, as long as one of these or both of them are high, our output will be high as well. Because if we think about this left part being the input, there's some current flowing through, it can go either the X3 or the X4 route to get to our lamp. Now with the top one for the AND gate, it has to go through the X1 and X2 to get to our lamp. So we can open these up, we'll pause this, and now we want to make our NAND gate because that's what it's asking us in here. So to make a NAND gate, we know that it's not an AND gate. And if we have a truth table for an AND gate, it's going to be basically 0, 0, 0, 1 when we look at the output column. So that means if it's not an AND gate, it's going to be completely the opposite. So it's going to be 1, 1, 1, 0. So that means when we have these switches off, or if we have at least one hit, it's going to um, send power to our light. So we're going to have to make these gates. Now, since it's a NOT, it's a logical NOT operator, we're going to use something different from the switch. This switch itself is going to be a relay contact NO. The NO is for open, so we can see that this is open right here, uh, meaning that no current is going to flow through. And if we want a different one, all we're going to do is look up a uh, NC one. And it's going to look something a little bit different from what we have here. But we can go to place, we're going to go to components, we go to ladder contacts, and then we want a relay contact, and it's going to be NC. And we can see that it's going to be slightly different for our um, description here. So ladder diagram, normally closed relay, whereas our NO is a normally open relay. So we're going to take this NC and we're going to place it right here. And then we can take this and place it right here, and then just close this. So again, this is an NO for normally open, and this is an NC for normally closed. If it's a closed circuit, the current's going to flow through. So when both of these are off, we're going to have some current go to the lamp. And we could search in lamp, or we could just copy and actually paste this. It'll be a little bit easier. And we can do Control shift w to get a wire to go from here to here. Now, again, this is going to work when the outputs are both off, right? When the switches are open and when one of them is closed as well. And so that kind of is like an OR gate, but the opposite. So it's going to be in the same kind of placement as an OR gate, just using these NOT operators. So we can place this wire and we're going to test this afterwards as well. It's a little bit off center, but all we need to do is make sure they're connected for it to work. So we can place these here, um, and we can make sure that they're connected actually right here, because it's not connected. So once that's set, we can do the same thing, but for our NOR gate, because that's the next one that we have to do. So we can press escape. I'm just going to hover over and select all of these and copy and paste it below. Now we're going to have to change this up a little bit, so we'll delete this wire and then we'll delete all of this right here. Now we want the NOR, and NOR is not an OR, and the output for an OR gate is 0, 1, 1, 1, and so it's going to be 1, 0, 0, 0. And so that means that this is only high, the output is only going to give us something when both of these switches are off. And so what we can do is say that looks kind of like an AND gate, but completely flipped. So using our normally closed, we are going to make what resembles an AND gate like this. And then we can connect our wire through this right here. So we have a wire there, wire there, and a wire here. So if we run this, let's only look at these bottom ones, right? Let's look at the bottom one, at the top bottom one first. So we said it's a NAND gate, not an AND gate, meaning that this light bulb should be on when both of these are open, when one of them is closed, and then, oh, and it looks like it copied over the M1. So we can't use the same M1. We can just easily change this to be M2. 
and then we can change this to be M2 as well. That way these switches are different. So we run it again. So they're both open, meaning that this light is going to get some light. And then we can close it, and we can see that it still has light. If we close both, there is no light here. Now if we open it, we can, or we'll let's open both of them. For this bottom one, we can see that the light is on. If we close one, we can see that the light is going to go off because it's open. Um, same thing with this one here. If it goes off, or if it goes on, the light is off. And so that is going to be it for our AND, OR, NAND, and NOR gate. If we want, or ladder, ladder logics, not gates. If we wanted to make any other ladder logics, they'd be very simple and very similar. So if we want to make this in an industrial application, you can think of a safety switch which turns on the machine where two people would have to press a power button so it would look something like an AND gate to have the machine actually turn on. So if we run this, we can see that both switches are off, right? If one person wants to turn the machine on, they'd press their button. And then the X2 is like a next person, they have to press their button for the machine to turn on. And that is it for the industrial application, and that is going to be it for this lab. If we look below, and actually at the description of what's going on, we can activate the lamp in the OR rung by selecting the simulate slash run, which is what we did up here. We can hover over and click them. All relays with M1 as the reference are energized, and we realized that even when we made the mistake, when we had multiple M1s when we wanted an M1 and an M2. The X6 lights, uh, when if we were to do this example right here for an OR, when the X3 or X4 needs to be energized to complete our circuit. Now this M1 or M2 right here is going to be a coil. So pressing one would close this J1, which in our case is gonna be an S1, which activates the coil M1 because it completes the circuit, right? There's going to be current flowing through here. If we open this, there's no current flowing through. So if we close this, it's going to flow through and complete our coil. That's going to be the same thing for our S2. And then we would run and simulate. So all relays with M1 and M2 as the reference are recognized if both switches are closed. We have the lights up and it's just telling us more about here. We have some sample circuits and a holding tank that we can look at, but we're not going to look at this. We're just doing the simple ladder logic for this lab. One issue about this lab that I came in conflict with, and that's when I was actually running the simulation. So if I go in here, the run button is like right here. And if I were to run it, um, at first it would be like, oh, you need to ground the ladder. Um, that doesn't really make any sense. We don't need to do that. There should be a way to just continue through this so you don't actually need to do this um, you just go through and it will take a while for me on the virtual desktop it loaded it took a few minutes really and it fixed the error on its own that's just a little side note if we run into this problem when we're doing this lab because i did